Thank you, everybody, at the South Huntington uh, Public Library. Uh, Jen from Teens, how are you? If you're watching, I don't know if you are, but oh, it was great to work with you. Um, we are good. Over here, I live in Hampton Bays, and in Riverhead, usually towards the end of August, we always have the Polish Festival. Well, of course, we have to cancel it this year. So I had said, I'm going to create a program geared towards doing something for the Polish Festival. And the day I sent out something about this, I can't tell you how many of these programs I'm doing. This exact program, I am doing about six times this week. So, uh, you know, today's the first day that I'm doing it. So I'm actually practicing on you. So if you want to watch me at the end of the week, I'll be really good, I promise. No, I, it's fine. It's all good. So I'm going to go over all different things uh, about this dish, how to change it up if you like. First thing I want to do, turn on my burner, turn this heat on here, and I'm just going to drizzle about a tablespoon of olive oil in here. Okay, my son Chris is filming. He does it every day for me. Uh, we, we actually did a class earlier over at Deer Park Library virtually, and we did a blueberry muffin uh, bread. Okay, so it's the texture of a muffin put into a bread. So while this oil is heating up, I am just going to take some yellow onion. You want it nice and firm all the way around. You want it to be really solid. Okay, that way you know it's really fresh. Just going to cut these little ends off of here. And I need about a half cup to three quarters of a cup of the onion. And this is a recipe that if you add a little more of one, a little less of another, it's this one is all about your taste, okay? So you change it up the way you like. So let me just dice up this onion. As soon as the oil is hot, then I will put it in there. And I am just gonna wanna get it kind of Kind of soft, almost like where it's caramelized. Catherine, I think this is the first program you've been at at mine, right? Usually you're gone by the time we do the programs. Yes, you oh, yeah? So I'm glad to be here with you. Absolutely glad. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to take this onion here. Just want to feel it. When you add the onion into the oil, it should be like if you just put a dot of water or you put just this little thing of flour, you know, and it sizzles, you know it's good to put it in there. Now I have a non-stick pan here, so you always want to use a wooden spoon then. That way you're not going to scratch the surface, okay? Okay, we're going to get that nice and soft. While that is cooking, I'm going to go over some things about this recipe. So what I did was I took some red potatoes, okay? And you could just put them in the microwave with a couple tablespoons of water. And you can put a lid on it and just steam it for about three, four minutes. Cut them into little cubes just like this, okay? And they should be fork tender, okay? Or I'm gonna put a knife in, so knife tender. So it should go through, but the potato should hold together. So it should have a little texture to it, a little firmness to it. So I am gonna leave these red potatoes on the side here. I'm not gonna make the full recipe here because as I said, I'm making it six times this week. How much kielbasa do you think I can eat, right? So, but I am gonna talk as if I'm making the whole recipe, okay? Now, this recipe here, you should get about six to eight good servings out of this, okay? You can always serve some stuffed cabbage with it, uh, some, uh, some beets on the side, you know, roasted cauliflower is always good. So I'm gonna get that nice and soft. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make a mixture. It's gonna have some brown sugar, it's gonna have some cider vinegar, uh, Dijon mustard, thyme, a little black pepper, okay? So I'm just going to start that. Okay, so I'm taking about two tablespoons of brown sugar. 
brown sugar, whenever you're baking with it, you always want it to be packed in there. Okay. And then I want two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. You really don't want to substitute the apple cider vinegar. A small bottle like this is about a dollar and a half, okay? So it's easy to find, easy to uh, kind of go get for a dollar and a half. And this one, a store brand, would be just fine. Okay. Going to put a few grinds of black pepper in here. It'll probably come out to about a quarter teaspoon, so not too much. Okay, I'm just going to give the onions a little stir. My camera guy, Chris, he's good, isn't he? We've, we've had a lot of practice doing this. Okay, and now I'm going to add some Dijon mustard, about one tablespoon's worth. If you're a mustard fan, you can hit it just a little bit more. If you're not, a little bit less. Okay, but you really do want it in there. Okay, and just like a little pinch of the, the thyme leaves. Okay, just put some of them in there. If you are using the dried ones, you want to use about a half a teaspoon. If you are using fresh thyme, you want about one and a half teaspoon. The dried is more potent and really holds the flavor stronger, okay? Try to get some fresh, because I always try to use fresh, but the stores were out of them. Typically, you can find almost everything now. You know, I think we're, we're doing okay in the supermarkets now. So letting that cook, I'm just gonna lower that just a little bit. I want to whisk this mixture here. Kind of makes a nice glaze to this dish here. This is a nice hearty dish, so uh, any time of the year you really could do it. Again, I'm doing this because of the Polish festival. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on these onions, soften this just a little bit. I know we have some new people out there. We have some people from, I know, Rhode Island. If you're any other states or wherever you're from, let me know where you're from, and I may know you, you know, so please say hello and ask any questions you want at any time. If you would like to go to my Facebook page, it is simply Creative Chef Rob, and I will tell you everywhere I will be. Every, by every Sunday, I put up my schedule, and it will tell you where I'm at, okay? I have some folks that are on there every single day at every library. It's so nice. It really is. I always say I hope that this is bringing joy to some of the people that really can't get out, can't do things, uh, and because it certainly does to me as well. So these are almost done, these onions here. Okay. Again, I'm just going to lower this a touch. I'm going to take some Polish kielbasa. Now, you would use about three quarters of a pound. You can cut this as thick or as small as you would like, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it right down the middle. And I'm going to just cut it into nice slices. You can leave it into round slices if you like. But if you want it really easy to eat, I'm just cutting it like this is really good. Now, if you live by Riverhead, close to where I do, there's Polish Town, USA, and go there for the kielbasa because it is unbelievable. It is so good. There's a couple of delis that make their own kielbasa there, and it's really, really good. You can pick up the pierogies, everything that they make, all fresh there. I believe over in Kopeg as well, uh, it's a big Polish community, so they have it as well, because I know when I go to that library, there's been times where I stop at some of those places, too. Okay, so these onions are getting nice and soft. So I'm going to take my three quarters of a pound kielbasa. I'm going to add it into the onions here. Any questions, Chris? No, nope, don't see any. Come on, I need some questions out there. Come on, how's everything in Rhode Island? How are you guys? You guys all staying healthy out there? 
I hope so. We're doing pretty good here in New York. And hopefully we continue on that same path. So I'm just going to get this kielbasa uh, hot all the way through. Uh, it is always fully cooked. Okay. I want the onion to kind of be very tender. After I get this kielbasa really, really tender, I am going to start adding some of the potatoes in there because then I want to crisp it up. Okay. Yes, Chris. So I want to ask, what is the name of this dish? Of this dish, it is called um, red potato and kielbasa skillet. It's a Polish dish that uh, you can use the turkey kielbasa. You can use regular sausage for this dish as well. Turkey sausage, chicken sausage, any of that would be fine. Always watch, like if you're using the whole fat kielbasa, it can throw off a lot of grease. So sometimes maybe you may want to go in there and towel a little off so this way you stay a little healthy, okay? But they do sell the light kielbasa in the, in the traditional supermarket. Now, as I'm watching this right here, I'm going to add the potatoes now because I want to get these a little on the crisp side. So this takes about three, four minutes. Remember, these are cooked just for a couple minutes in the microwave or you can boil them. And now I'm just going to kind of let it sit a little so it kind of goes down to the bottom and it really hits the oil. And that way it gives a little brown texture to it. As I'm letting that do that, I'm just going to add just a little bit of kosher salt, just for a little bit of flavor. Kosher salt really brings out the flavor and everything. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I have been doing. And um, I have been doing these virtual programs since April. I do them on YouTube. Uh, so check all your libraries because usually uh, most of the libraries I know in Long Island have the YouTube one. Um, I am doing Facebook and I'm doing Zoom and I have had some uh, go-to meeting ones as well. Uh, I'm doing it in New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, all the way up to Niagara Falls. Uh, we did one in Pittsburgh the other night, uh, which was great. And uh, Chris says we have a question. So next, what kind of pen are you using? Is that a wok? It is like a wok, but it, it's not an actual wok it's just almost like a deep dish type of pan and it has the non-stick coating on it and it's great for when you're adding a lot of things to it and you don't want it as if you want to shake it and flip it you don't want it to go outside the pan but very very it's a really good uh good dish the brand it is i don't know i don't see it on here whatsoever it's probably under the burner and at this point too late to find out what brand it is but something this size, uh, this deep, is really good. I do a lot of pasta dishes. I know uh, at the end of this week, I'm doing a 10 a.l. of vodka. I think on Thursday, I want to go public library. And that one, I'll use the same pan for it because none of the sauce gets out of it. It's really, really good. Also. So we have been doing these classes, like I said, since April. We've actually done some classes in Venice, Italy, Rome, Santorini, Greece, and we're doing some in Turkey and Hungary coming up. And what we're doing is we're teaching some people over in those countries our dishes, and then what they do is they turn around and teach us one of theirs. So they take our dish, they use it, they teach people over there, and then I take a dish and I teach everybody here. I did a uh, traditional tiramisu the other night from uh, Venice, Italy. And uh, we did it two nights in a row. It was really, really good. If you want to go back and see that one live, I'm just giving this a little toss. If you want to see that one live, you can either go to the Hicksville Public Library Facebook or the Elwood. Okay. And of course, always check South Huntington's website, uh, their Facebook page. Check it all the time because they constantly add things to it. And don't forget, you want to see different programs that I'm doing, it's simply Creative Chef Rob. Okay. So we're going to let that cook. In a little bit, we are going to add this mixture right here, which is really, really tasty. 
And then I am gonna add in some fresh baby spinach, okay? Use the baby spinach, more tender leaves. Make sure you wash it really, really thoroughly, okay? And then I have some bacon right here that I'm actually just gonna cut up a couple pieces. And the bacon, of course, will give it great, great flavor. And of course, it smells up the whole uh, unbelievably. And you can use up to, probably up to about five pieces of bacon if you want to go that much, okay? And you have a really, really hearty meal. But I kind of want to get these potatoes almost to where they're like home fried cooked, okay? So they have that nice brownness on it. So I try to work on the bottoms a little bit and then flip it. But what can happen is if you, if you have a lot of ingredients in here and then the oil from the uh, kielbasa, uh, you have a lot in there, it kind of sweats the pan, and then it won't allow it to brown. So be careful putting too much into a pan. So I'm just going to take a few pieces of bacon and just give this a rough chop. And at the very end, I put this in the dish. So you can cook this bacon ahead of time and then just add some at the very end. So get it towards the crisper side, and it will throw up a lot of flavor in there. So I'm gonna leave that on the side. It's always good to prepare your ingredients, have them ready so at the end, when you really do want to eat, it's ready to go. Okay. Has anybody out there ever been to Polish Town in Riverhead? It's really, really good. Uh, and next year, hopefully, we can have the Polish festival out. So you can see, I'm getting some nice brownness on here. I'm gonna have Chris zoom in on that. Someone said they go every single year and they're missing it this year. Ah. Oh. And well, then, yep. Someone else said, would you serve this with sauerkraut, rice, or any other side? Sauerkraut would be great with this, okay. Uh, even sour cream on the side, you could put pierogies on the side, and that would be really wonderful. So I am just going to go around the outside of this and just get a little of the oil, so that way it does brown nicely in here. Now we have coming up, we have some a gelato workshop that we have coming up. We're gonna make a uh, strawberry gelato, a uh, mango gelato, and then in the fall, I have a pumpkin pie gelato class that we are gonna make. Okay. I'm just gonna give this a flip. So if you can see, this is getting really nice and brown. It does take a few minutes, but it's worth letting it get to the texture uh, that you like it, nice and crisp. One of the things, be careful as you're eating this because potatoes, as they're really, really hot inside, they really hold their heat. So even if you're eating it a few minutes later, be careful because you, you don't want to burn them out. Okay. At the very end, we will throw the spinach in there. It just gives it a nice color, and then I serve it into a nice dish. Okay. So we did a class over in Italy. It was called Pasta ECC, and it's pasta with chickpeas. And when we were teaching them a class and they were teaching us that class, I'm looking at the recipe and I'm just saying, it's not much to it. It can't be much flavor. We made it and the flavor was just phenomenal. Uh, it had fresh rosemary in there, olive oil, uh, the pasta, some smashed up chickpeas, and they don't add a lot of butter or or uh, cream to it. They add more of the pasta water, to it, and that is how they kind of get the a little bit of a sauce to it. Yes. Someone asks, where are you doing the gelato classes? The gelato classes. Uh, you you know what you have to do is kind of just look at my Facebook page. I know it's not this week, but uh, the following week definitely. Uh, is um there's a class so if you go to my page on say next sunday night it'll show you where it's going to be okay and just uh, if you want to go to my page please like it i hope you like it and one of the libraries that we are doing the gelato class at is the master Merchants library 
And right now they are, they already have it posted that like about the event and you can also access that from our page because we're a co-host for that. So just to watch the program that night, you can go to our page for that. Okay. So I am happy how nice and brown that is. You could always get it more if you wanted to. I am just going to add this sauce and this sauce has such good flavor to it. I'm just going to stir it because I want to coat everything. Now I am standing far enough away back from this pot right here and I smell everything. The kielbasa, I smell the onion, I'm smelling the Dijon, the cider vinegar, so it's coming out with so much flavor. Okay, look at that, it has such a nice glaze to it as well. So now what I am going to do is I am going to add some of that bacon to it. Okay, I just want it to be boiling just a little bit because what happens is all the liquid kind of disappears and then it really coats this whole dish nicely and then all the flavor is in the potatoes and the kielbasa. My cameraman, Chris, always stands back when Dad always does that, right? Sometimes he doesn't give me a warning, like this time. Yep. <laughs> it's like being at SeaWorld and being in the Splash Zone. You know, you signed up for the job, right, Chris? But one hurts. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's right there. And now I am going to start tossing in the spinach and you will just see the color to it. I just want to get the spinach to where it is wilted. Okay. Maybe someday we'll do this one at the library. Boy, will the library stink that day. Kielbasa, bacon, onions. Oh my God. Whenever I do something like that, I always get unexpected visitors coming through that door there. I always just really like the colors in this as much as, of course, the flavor. Because colors, as you're doing something like this, it just matters when you serve this to somebody. You always want to have some sort of coloring because it just has summer all over it, or fall when you're doing the apples or the pumpkins, or the holidays. You know, you always have some sort of color that really brings out the whole dish. Okay, and that is good. I have a little bit of liquid in here, so I want to get all that out, because that is just all really, really good flavor. I am actually just going to take this out. I'm going to put it on a large tray. And that way I really feel like you get to really see what the way it should be served. So tell me what you think. I hope you think that would tastes really, really good, because I promise you that will taste really, really good. Is my guy, Chris, really good at the camera or what? You know, he started, he started with me in April, and, you know, we bought better equipment so you could really zoom in on the dish, because it's really, really important to go into each dish and really see everything. And Chris is my son. He's always, he's done a great job for me. Yes, what do we have? Uh, someone said that looks fabulous, and someone else said looks great. Thank you so much. And then someone else said that looks great. Can't wait to try it. I can't wait to serve it to you because when I serve it to you, that means we're back in the libraries, and it will be absolutely just just great. And someone else said looks delicious. Thank you. Again, I'm gonna be doing this one a lot of libraries. I'm actually doing this one again tonight at the Babylon Public Library uh, at 6.30. That is on Facebook. So if you want to 
if you like repeats and you want to watch it, okay, uh, tomorrow I am doing this same exact one at Plain Edge Public Library at 7 o'clock, sorry, 5 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock I'm doing this at the Smithtown Public Library. And uh, please uh, ask me any questions before we do go. Uh, oh, South Huntington, uh, uh, Catherine, we've we've worked together for so many years, and uh, I know Catherine's always like, "Are you ready to book for the following year?" And uh, we're usually we always get it. There's been times we've missed each other, but uh, for the most part, we usually get each other, and uh, and uh, it's always a pleasure working with you, Catherine. Thank you. It's always a pleasure working with you, and I'm glad you found a way to continue the programming. Me too. <laughs> it, it's 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 good, of course, you know, for you know, work wise, but it gives you something to look forward to. It keeps you in shape for cooking. Uh, you have to learn how to take twenty five thirty and bring it down to two or three dinners. So that was a big step. I know that you had to really train yourself, and then, like I said, now no driving, no nothing. You know, just except to get supplies and that and I try to go out once a week so this way you know the stores aren't crowded and I think that's the best thing for everybody now yes Chris someone asks do you have to peel kielbasa is there a casing on it uh there is a casing on there but you do not need to uh peel it it is not like a uh if you eat the sabret franks or the um <laughs> Uh, sometimes the uh, the Nathan's will have it. It has that real snap to it. Some people like that casing because it seals in the juices. But this is a very thin casing. And as you cook it like this, you would not even know that there is any sort of casing on there. They just need something thin to seal it on there. Uh, not even like the sausage. The sausage one is thin, but it can be a little chewy at times. Kabasi one, not so. Okay. So any final questions before we say goodbye? And uh, please look at the South Huntington's website all the time because they're always putting up new programs every day, whether it's the children, whether it's the teens, whether it's the adults. And actually by you going there and you watching them, even from you people out of state, uh, the libraries will continue doing it, you know? So it's, it's good for everybody, yes. Someone asked, are there different types of kielbasa? And someone else said, thank you. You are quite welcome. There are absolutely a lot of different types of kielbasa. Of course, there's, years ago, there used to be a fat-free one, you know, and I'm not sure what they actually had in there, but then now they have just the light one, or they have the traditional, as you would say, full fat one, uh, but they have a turkey one, they have the smoked sausage one, um, and if you go to uh, any Polish town, Polish delis, uh, it's amazing the different ones that you'll find. And the flavor compared to from Polish town to like your supermarket is night and day. It really is. They, they really, uh, it just the quality is up there really good. So everybody, thank you so much. And I hope you all stay safe and please continue to watch my programs. And Catherine and the South, Han South Huntington Public Library, Thank you as always. Always a pleasure. Thank you. It's a great class. It looks really good. Thank you so much. Stay well, everybody. You too. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.